All right, welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So sorry about the voice here. So I'm still um, dealing with a little bit of sickness from over the weekend. Um, so I was a little bit tough this morning in the trading room uh voice is definitely pretty scratchy but uh definitely feeling a little bit better here today so just bear with me right now <clears throat> i'm trying to get through this video luckily uh, not a lot going on today in the market here um spiders up just 61 cents i think everybody's just looking at that solar eclipse right now um <laughs> you know it's market look at this so if we take a look at the uh spx you can see we've been in a seven point range since uh before one o'clock and it's 3 30 now so very very tight um really quiet action spiders here um 32 million shares that's really light for 3 30. i think a lot um i think today tomorrow will probably be on the quieter side in general um until we get to cpi at least on wednesday morning we also have um 10s and 30s on Wednesday and Thursday, and then PPI also on Thursday. So we have some auction. Janet's in um, China right now, I think, where she was this weekend, probably trying to sell duration. She knows she has to sell duration. Um, it's speculated on that she's trying to tell them to ease off on their gold purchases. That's something that I think is also possibly happening. Um, just some food for thought there. But um, right now, really quiet here. And um, again, until proven otherwise, you still have this um big reversal candle that's in play how do we prove otherwise we just close above it um that would uh negate the sell uh, but right now still technical damage uh from last week and um pretty good outside move we're bouncing right now um but no follow through here yet um one thing i will say is um i think for bears it's not the end like i know it, it market's holding up right there's eating you're eating time off the clock but i think if we had a big down day on friday it wouldn't have been as or even like a gap and go down friday i don't think that would be something bears would really want because you run into this 50 ma you run into 50 50 you get a good you know a tail candle like that and you're gonna slingshot back higher you're just gonna you're gonna squeeze so i think really for bears it's not the worst thing that we're just going sideways right now in fact, you had a similar setup here last summer where we had this big outside gap in crap and we just stayed inside of it for three days and then we gapped down uh, the next day. So it could be a similar setup there. Um, doesn't mean it has to, but just something to keep an eye on. Um, again, tomorrow, I don't think we're going to do a ton either. I could be wrong. We could get some, I would be surprised to see like a, a little flash volatility um, as well. Uh, market definitely seems touchy and there's lots of geopolitical stuff going on right now too so something to keep an eye on um, but we've traded through 52 look at this it's fit five days in a row one two three four five days in a row that we've touched 5200 so this is a big point of control it's a big um you know psychological level here and um whichever way this goes it's going to blast off from that level most likely so big big level there there is a ton of support down here at 5100 and 5050 still um if we were to get down there and with that 50 ma um if bears were able to hit that and put in a lower high then we could go down lower and the concern for me would be here is um, we didn't build any support on the weekly uh until 4800 so if this does turn into a bigger correction here again it's barely even a correction at this point at this time uh, if it turns bigger i think we could you know i think 4800 is certainly doable um again this would be down the line it's not going to be in a straight line it's not going to be right away but um just some possibilities there uh right now short term uh above 5220 you can go to 5230 and then 50 above 5230 would certainly repair some damage here but you'd still have to break above that red bar high on a closing basis to me to really negate the sell same thing goes for the cues line in the sand on the downside is 432.74 on a close um, that could open the door up to uh, 410 again on the qqq 
Um, IWM is green today. It's holding up okay. Again, still same rules apply above the red. Negates some of the selling. 205 point of control, 200 support, 210 resistance. Um, pretty simple chart there. Um, diamond, the weakest. So look at the slice on the diamond. You wiped out all of March and, and some of February's uh, trading with basically like two or three days, four days of, of trading. So back above that's bullish on a close, obviously. Um, but if we lose 385, I mean, this can go to 380, 378 pretty fast, I think. So diamond definitely weaker. Um, semiconductors um, up 80 cents here on the SMH, but still inside of that red. And you could be, again, if this goes sideways here, it could be setting up like a, another bear pattern. Look at NVIDIA there, um, AMD. So we had a bear pattern there play out already on AMD, down move sideways. You got another down move. We consolidate here, it can go lower. So some of these leading semiconductors may be putting in immature bear patterns here. Again, they're immature. They're only, they only got like two days to them. Um, so they're not really, I wouldn't put too much behind them yet. But something we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. IGV, same kind of thing with the uh, uh, bearish rejection um, right there uh, last Thursday. And um, as long as we're below that red bar, um, it's definitely on the weaker side. So keep that in mind. Uh, Dow Transport's a little bit better though. So we did have the reversal like everything else, but this pattern here is still okay on the daily. And it's still okay on the weekly too. So again, I think this, I continue to believe that this is a sector that we'll see money flow um, if money flows out of semis and, and other tech sectors. So transport's still okay and uh, still holding up all right. All right. Um, so interest rates today were very strong, specifically on the short end. Two year breaking out. If we get up towards 5%, the Fed's not cutting. So I think that's going to be the crux of what goes on this week. If that starts to break out here, CPI comes in hot, um, which it's it's probably going to be hotter than last month, given where oil's, what oil's done and gasoline. Um, but we, we're making new highs going back to December right here on um, the two year. And if we get to 5%, you know, you're going to be within 50 basis points of the Fed funds. You can't cut. So that's just kind of how it works. Um, the five-year, again, bidding up here, but pulling back. I think the tens and the thirties might pull back a little bit, um, maybe even after the auction, but I'm still looking for higher lows in yields pretty much in general here. So um, yields backing off a little bit on the long end, but the short end very strong. <laughs> and the yield curve just continues to invert. Um, XHB here, same kind of deal. Trend is up. Uh, red bar high is your resistance. Um, VNQ, same thing. This is actually a little bit better. It's closer to Thursday's high than a lot of other things. Um, and again, on the weekly chart, as long as we're above this point line, uh, it is safe. XLF, again, a little outside movement. Remember, we do have bank earnings starting this weekend, or I should say Friday morning. Big run. Maybe you see some profit taking after that. I think that's likely. Um, again, just speculating, not like predicting, but just, you know, speculating. Uh, we'll see if and when they get there. I would expect this holds up at least until Friday, unless CPI, you know, throws it, you know, we miss by a mile or something and the market goes haywire. Uh, KRE getting a little bit of a bid today. I still don't like the weekly chart of that. I do like the weekly chart of KBE and uh, broker dealers. Not terrible there on the daily bullish and sidebar. Uh, my issue is that the weekly is just really overbought. Uh, so oil backed off a little bit today, but it did come back. Again, I'm still just going to give this the upside bias to 90. Um, I wouldn't chase it up here. I wouldn't short it yet. Um, but if you got up to 90, 92 in a straight line, I, I would consider it for sure. Um, but oil still holding up well. I still think there's a little bit of room. Um, XLE also, again, overbought on the daily. But your weekly, that's a base that took two years to break out of. So that's an impulsive power move there on the weekly and monthly of XLE. Um, XOP, same thing. OIH, a little bit weaker. Green to red day today. Into some resistance now. Um, but again, I, I'm interested to get back in this once it gives me a correction. Um, CCJ holding up here. Starting to put in inside bar bullish consolidation on the daily. Beneath resistance. If it does enough of it and the moving averages catch up, it can go higher. Same thing with URNM, but now all of a sudden URNM and URMJ 
So you have like slightly weaker patterns in CCJ, so they're kind of taking turns. Again, not unhealthy to see that rotation back and forth. So, um, again, the sector looks good, and um, again, I, I, it looks pretty healthy here. Um, that gas firmed up a little bit today, up 3%. It could be working on a little bullish in sidebar with the pullback. Um, nothing terrible. I think the K contract still looks pretty good. I like how you got that spike of the low broke about. Now we're doing this bull flag here. Um, so this might want to go test two here um, pretty soon. Maybe 210. Um, but good good uh, pattern there for Nat Gas, and we'll see if it can get going tomorrow. Looks a little bit better here. Late last, last week, it didn't look that good. Um, dollar came back in here today. Th uh, 105 still resistance, but weekly, you got, you know, power bar and then one, two, three pullback maybe. It was still with the higher lows here. If the dollar can break 105, um, it can really go higher. So watching that this week, gold continuing to make new all-time highs. I'm just going to give this the upside bias to 2,400. So that's kind of where I'm expecting it to go. Um, but right now, it's overbought here. We'll see maybe going into Wednesday, the CPI or the, the auction can cause a reaction. But right now, it's been disconnected with the price of bonds. So who knows? But I'm going to give it the upside bias to 24. Um, uh, silver hit my target today of 28. See all this resistance here. We've never been able to sustain above that since 2020 for more than a few days or maybe a week. Um, so this should be the area here where it might need to stall out. Um, if it keeps going higher, it'll just it'll probably stall out at 30. Um, and then ultimately, I think it goes up to 35. But um, right now, big run here, and we'll see if it uh, ends up stalling out. Another big runner here, platinum getting going up almost 4%. They should get to 1,000. And um, you got this trend line here. If I can break above that, then it really can get going. And you guys know I like my palladium too. I mean, I was just saying to the members, like, this is, you know, at some point, the you know, it's, money's going to look at silver, they're going to look at gold, and then they're going to look at palladium, and they're going to be like, well, wait a second. Why are we chasing these up, you know, gold up when this is, you know, at historically, well, not historically cheap, but it's at a multi-year low. So this is going to be a big catch-up trade, I think, um, at some point. But Palladium getting a nice outside bid today. If we can get above 11, I think it can get up to 13 pretty fast. Um, copper through my level as well. Just look at that big push. That even, that's, um, yeah, that's bidding up more than uh, it was like an hour ago. Yeah, look at this. Even in the after hours, it's bidding up. So those, <laughs> those Chinese buy algos are going crazy right now. Um, yeah, what can you say? Nice little, nice pattern too, like curling back up there. You know, if you can hold above here and get above 435, I mean, you know, it's probably a little, yeah, around 445 or so, a little, a little bit of a level there, but, um, you know, 460 is your next really big level. So copper definitely, definitely, uh, continuing to hold. Look at the volatility here too. Big move down, up, V-shape, up, V-shape, down, V-shape. And the same thing with silver intraday. Look at the gap down and then the big surge. Another dump here and then a big surge again. So I've seen I've seen the metals behave like this before. Um, they can get really volatile and they can run hard when they when they get like this. All right, um, Bitcoin here. So Bitcoin also, same kind of deal. We talked about this little wedge last week. There it is, breaking out. Um, we'll see if it follows through tomorrow. Sometimes you get a break of these and then the next day it'll come back in. Um, overall, big picture, I still think it's a little overbought on the weekly. I'd prefer to see that weekly 20 MA catch up to price before it breaks out. But um, outside of that, it's it's holding up fine and it, and it looks good. So I think Bitcoin's still holding up nicely. All right, again, lastly, again, this so this red bar high here remains king to me until proven otherwise. Um, again, looks like we're going to come back into about 5,200 um, by the close. Big surprise, right? We're going to close this right there, just like they did last Friday. We'll see if it's, well, they give us that one more day. Um, we have CPI to, uh, on Wednesday. So we'll see if they hold us in this range here again for one more day. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Also wouldn't be surprised to see a little shock of volatility, maybe a little quick shakeout or something like that. Um, tomorrow, just getting the sense that that's kind of the market that we're in here. 
But um, outside of that, it seems to be all eyes on CPI Wednesday. We also have those auctions coming up as well. And then, of course, bank earnings uh, kicking off the earnings season on Friday. So anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me at convertrades.com. Hopefully my voice is better tomorrow. I think it's getting better now. So, uh, But outside of that, you guys take care, and I will see you guys all tomorrow afternoon.